John 19, 25, 27. This I have also discussed in the past, but it's going to blow your mind nevertheless. John 19, 25, 27. Please, guys, listen to this. I've done this. I swear to you, you're going to pass out from shock and awe. Now, there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, woman, remember that word, woman. Jesus is on the cross. Mary's the woman. Please pay attention. I swear, I've already discussed this, but I swear you're going to get blown away again. I promise you. Woman, behold your son. Woman, Jesus her son, John her son. Woman and her seed. Then he said to the disciple, behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. So point number one, Jesus is on the cross. His mother, so he's the son of the mother. And it says, John is your son, and you are his mother. So the mother called woman, and here's her seed. And one of her seed is on the cross. Now, when Jesus was crucified, John 19, 17, notice the shape of the mound that he was crucified on. John 19, 17. And he, bearing his cross, went to a place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. You can still find that mound in Jerusalem. I was reading a commentary, right? Pay attention, Leonardo. There's a mound that looks like a head, a skull. So now, guys, please. I'm so excited for you to learn this and relearn it and rehear it because some of you already heard it. I'm about to jump out of my chair for joy. Honestly, I'm so elated. This is amazing stuff shows you the Bible supernatural. Okay, watch. Jesus is hanging on a cross. One of the poles would be protruding into the ground. So if you're looking at it, you see what looks like a head, a skull, and you see what looks like a stake being driven into the skull, right? Because if you're looking at it, that pole would be in the mound, right? Skull. It almost looks like someone's head is being pierced through, crushed, right? Crushed. Okay? Remember that. Okay, well, hold on. Who is Jesus again? He's the fruit of Mary. Luke 1, 42. Luke 1, 42. Let me skip to 42. Then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Mary, her fruit. Jesus, the fruit of her womb. Mary, woman, her fruit, the fruit of her womb. The fruit hanging on the cross. Okay? That's her seed, and John is her seed. Now notice that the cross is also described as a tree. Acts 5.30. Stavros, Staros. Acts 5.30. Don't chime in, guys. Just listen. Acts 5.30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Tree. Hmm. Acts 10.39. Acts 10, 39. Watch here. Okay. And we are all witnesses of all things, which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Okay. Acts 10, 39. It's also in Acts 13, 29. Galatians 3, 13. And Acts and 1 Peter 2, 24. Okay. Mary, the woman. Jesus, the fruit of her womb. Fruit on a tree. Her seed nailed on a cross, and the cross is on top of a mound that's shaped like a skull, and John is her seed. That's Genesis 3. A woman, Genesis 3, eats fruit from a forbidden tree and gives birth to death. Another woman gives birth to a fruit, her fruit, her seed, who hangs on a tree, and if you eat that fruit from the tree, you live. That woman in Genesis 3 was a virgin. This woman is a virgin. And then we're told in Genesis 3, 14 and 15, that God will put hatred between the serpent and the woman and between his seed and her seed. He will crush the heel of the seed and the seed will crush his head. Jesus, woman. 
calls her woman, the seed of the woman, who now has the serpent strike at his heel because it was Satan who instigated Jesus being nailed to the cross. So now he bites his heel, but as he bites his heel, then he crushes his head by the cross, crushing the head of the serpent. That's why it was shaped like a skull, symbolic of here's the seed of the woman who now crushes the head of the serpent under his heel. You caught it before I move on? She's, and I see why Jesus is calling her woman. This is the new Eve, the new woman, and we are her seed. And here's the fruit of her womb hanging on a tree. A virgin gives birth to a fruit hanging on a tree. Which fruit you eat to live? That virgin in Genesis 1 called woman ate forbidden fruit from a forbidden tree and brought death. Okay. And the serpent would strike her seed. Who's her seed? Jesus in union with his church. That's why he says to John, behold your mother, woman, your son, here's your seed. I'm forming and fashioning your seed. So we got that. We got it. Virgin woman in Genesis 3. Virgin woman in New Testament. Virgin woman eats fruit from a forbidden tree. Due to the instigation of the serpent, gives birth to death. Virgin woman in New Testament gives birth to the fruit of her womb. Who hangs on a tree, whose flesh you eat and blood you drink for life. The serpent will be at war with the woman and her seed. He's going to strike her seed in the heel, and he's going to crush his head. Jesus, the fruit of the woman, her seed, gets struck by the serpent, Satan, at the heel. Because if a poisonous snake bites you, you die. If he bites your heel, you die. So here the serpent strikes a mortal wound upon the seed of the woman, Jesus. But now he's close enough, because now when the serpent gets close to your feet, not only is he close enough to bite you, but he's close enough for you now to crush his head. So he bites you and you crush his head. So Jesus allows the serpent to bite his heel because he's inviting him to come close enough. So now that he's close enough, now you think you got me? Bam, I got you. And my cross, which you th think was the end of me, was me crushing your head, which is why the cross of Christ was situated on a mound that looked like a skull. So that would be symbolic of his cross crushing the head of the serpent. You got it? So Mary is that woman. That's why he's calling her woman. But as a Protestant idiot, I thought it was because he wasn't acknowledging her. Actually, he was exalting and elevating her status if you have eyes to see and ears to hear. He wasn't calling her woman to show like, hey, you're nothing. He was calling her woman to identify her with the woman of Genesis 3. That's why. Okay. He was identifying her as the woman and her seed, the fruit of her womb, the fruit hanging on a tree. That's the antidote to the death that that first woman gave birth to by eating forbidden fruit from a forbidden tree. I'm just giving you a minute or two for it to sink in.